<laughs> Welcome back to the Old Colony Cast, a podcast about all things Plymouth and surrounding areas. I'm joined, I'm Andy, which I tend to forget to say, and I am joined today by co-host Hannah. Hello. And our snappy editor, Fish. Yeah, hello. Producer, Fish, whatever. Um, I don't I don't have any recaps or anything. I do. What do you do? You do? I do. Ooh. What is it? I have follow-up about the Princess Pine. <gasps> the Prince. Oh, Okay. I'm like, what are we talking what about? Wait. The episode Andy wasn't there for. Okay. Oh, I don't think I actually listened to that one. Na, 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 na. Oh. <laughs> what is it? Okay, so uh, per... That was the second Hannah's one. Hannah's biggest fan. My oh, mom. Oh, yeah? What, what uh, Princess Pine is a protected species under Massachusetts State Law, Chapter 266, Section 116A. Yeah. It must not be picked or disturbed in any way. Oh, okay. Like, That's it's a important. it's a flat out don't touch. Okay, good to know. Oh. Huh? Yeah, so it's the kind of thing where we had, when we talked about it, it was like, yeah, you know, if it's on your property, you can kind of it's like just, just, just no, don't, don't yeah. touch. I said just no, but good to know that we have an, an official actual... just no yes. now. Thank you, Rosemary. All right, I think Thanks. that's. I can't remember. I listened to one of the two, but I can't remember which one. It's not that. It was one. the ones where you guys were crying about how much you missed. Yeah, me. it wasn't that one, but the, it's very sad, very that touching. That one was like, uh, like local plants that you can make. Um, Christmas. Christmas, yeah. Christmas decorations. Yes. Although, yeah, 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 yeah. Was so I here for that, to that one? one? I did listen to that. Wasn't no, I you here weren't for that here for that one. You weren't. Okay. I, okay, I definitely listened to that one. I don't remember what the other one was. I, I don't, don't even remember what the other plant was, because I talked about Jason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, there I, mean, were, I, there, I think there was a couple. Yeah, I yeah. mentioned Holly. Holly grows around here. What was the other there one? There was one that uh, that's called, like, Witches. Witches Brooms. Witches, Witches Brooms. Brooms. Yeah. yeah, see, I listened. Not just the part where you guys cried about like missing plant, me. Though. That was oh, because it is mistletoe. Yes. Oh mistletoe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, yeah. no, I didn't talk about that that much though. Okay, now that okay. we've got to the bottom of that. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that's it. That, that's, that's all I got. Oh, yeah, that's okay. all, all right. That was my only follow up. All right. What are we talking about today, Hannah? Uh, we're going to talk about. Um, maybe you've heard of him, the Boston boy fiend. Heard of him? No. no. Let me try another one. The boy torturer. No. Okay, I'll try another one. The demon. No. No. <laughs> the red devil. Uh, no. Uh, that one's no. a lot. That one could just be like the like. That just, just sounds a like devil. Yeah. communists. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I feel like we're going a bit far afield on this. I one. don't know his political affiliations, but um, I don't think he has to do. I don't think he was a communist. Um, we're going to talk about Jesse Harding Pomeroy. Oh, why didn't you say so? I did. He's mm-hmm. the Boston boy fiend. Do I you know who that is? I have no idea who okay. this is. I'm feeling it's true crime It is. <laughs> it is. It's been a little while, so. It, it You'd be so proud a- of me. I watched, uh, the miniseries on the Unabomber. Oh, I watched that a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. I watch a lot of that stuff. The Unabomber one was good. Yeah. Yeah. Learned a lot. Um. Anyways. So, born in Charleston, in Massachusetts. That's a little town of Boston area. Town in Boston. Uh, is it a town or is it like a borough? A borough. A neck of the woods yeah. in Boston. It's Charleston. Whatever. Charleston. Uh, November, you know of it. <laughs> November 29th, 1859. His Neighborhood. Pa- okay. His parents are Ruth Snowman. Which I liked that name. And <laughs> just as a side note. I like it. Snowman. Um, and Thomas J. Pomeroy. We talked about his aliases. Obviously, I don't know if you got a clear enough picture about what this kid's personality was like. Probably not a good one. No. It's not, not seem like a ray of sunshine. He's probably quiet and kept to himself. Yeah, very polite. Um, his <laughs> So... His crime spanned from 1871 to 1874. So we're talking about the perpetrator of several uh, deviant things that he did to people. One of uh, most of the ones I'm about to talk about now are assaults. Okay. And then they escalate. Okay. Okay. Like not on that same person, but down the line on a newer person. Okay. Was that was that you? Uh, that was me. Sorry. That's okay. It was on it's silent. on silent. 
I know it just was like a, the loudest vibration. I've well, because it was in like up against the chair. Oh, okay. I was like, Whoa! <laughs> I don't think the microphone. I hope the microphone didn't pick it up. Uh, it didn't, but now yeah. we've talked about it, so I'm gonna have to cut. Can all this you out. like insert? No. no, just insert a little buzz, buzz. Yeah, don't cut it buzz, out. It's buzz. fine. Everyone, it's real yeah. life. Yeah, it's real life. That's, yeah, Andy's I'm a popular guy. Just so everyone knows. Um, so <laughs> he had a lot of I'll call them victims, just victims of his violence um and they were all children now when these and this things, was in the 1850s he was born in 1859 so between 1871 okay so you he know? would be 12 yes so that also makes him a child okay um i'm just trying to like in my head is that civil war time uh just after okay yeah. all right so weird to think of it like that. I'm just trying to like yeah, put it you. in perspective of I know what I was always, going on. I always think of like when when is this to William Shakespeare? Like that kind of thing. Way after. Well, after. Way after. Way after. Way after. Yeah. <laughs> like so far after, not helpful. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so anyway. Um his first uh assault or recorded assault was February twenty 20- 21st 1872 it was a seven-year-old named tracy hayden and they were beaten and left on powderhorn hill so at this point i believe he was 13 um may 20th was the next one an eight-year-old named robert mayer beaten and left on oh in an outhouse Ooh. yes which I forgot of the time, there were plenty of them. Sure, yeah. Like, so this next one, weird combo on July 22nd, same year. Um, Johnny uh, Balk, he was tied up uh, after he was beaten, and he was in an, left in an abandoned outhouse on Powderhorn Hill. So pretty, like, local to the same area. Like, yeah. just, like same theme. Same thing's happening, kind of escalating um, already with the last person, like, or child. Were they being tied up? Beaten up or, like? Beaten up. Like, so they were survived? They Yes, so okay, that's why I said right. these, they were just, okay. like, attacked, um, brutalized, yet, no, like, all of them are survivors, so. Okay. Um, and so after those attacks, the Boston Globe... Uh, kind of dubbed him with that nickname of like the fiendish boy, whoever the ta- the attacker was, mm-hmm. because obviously they're getting some sort of statement from these kids, right? Um, for them to have been recorded in the first place, so mm-hmm. they're like they they know that there's a whoever like the person doing it was like young themselves. So early August 1872, Ruth, which is his mom, Stoneman. Tra- Snowman, yep, took her kids to uh, live in Southie off Broadway Street. At this point, his father had, like, kind of long abandoned them, so it was just her raising them. I believe she owned a dress shop. Okay. Um, so she would alter and make dresses for people. Um, and I think it said his, he had a brother, too. He might have had another sibling, but he had a brother that sold newspapers. He did not get into something as <laughs> as nice and decent as selling newspapers. No. He just continued down the road he was on. Okay. So the attacks on smaller kids um, like picked right back up in his new neighborhood. So the first one is a seven-year-old George Pratt. But um, the, the police didn't know who was doing it? Still not yet. Okay. Yep. Um, George Pratt, he was found beaten... Um, by some fishermen and uh on september 11th joseph kennedy he was some fishermen yeah. found him when he yes. was beaten not yeah, yeah. found him beaten by some fishermen no sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah it was a group of fishermen because he was like near like yeah, yeah. docks he wasn't quite like on but he was in that area um that just had one of those like shot an elephant in my under my oh, underwear yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. statements yep I like to throw people off. Um, so, September 11th, another seven-year-old named Joseph Kennedy was also beaten. Um, 
it was his recount of the attack or um or like we'd find out later it was him that kind of led us to know who the attacker was but his recount of his attack is that he was like lured into an abandoned boathouse near the salt marshes in the southy area and he was assaulted and then cut with a pocket knife so now we have a weapon now he's escalated yes and then on september uh not 11th again on september 17th railway workers find a five-year-old robert gould and he was beaten slashed and tied to a telephone pole oof i know he was he was okay. Yeah. Like all these people are survivors. Survivors. All these children, I should say. I'm saying people, but they're so little. Like seven and eight year old is little, but when I saw the five year old, I was like, oh my god. That's yeah, I mean, crazy. they're all pretty. Yeah, they're all little yeah. Yeah. for sure. But five, I'm like, oh my and god. And he's so this baby. this dude uh, whose name I've already forgotten, which is no surprise. Um, Jesse. Jesse. Is still like thirteen. Yeah, he's like just he's. I think he might be fourteen in this okay. year. No, thirteen still. Um, so by chance, Jesse, the, the 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 boy fiend, the boy fiend, the red devil, the red devil was walking by um, police station six and just like he just poked his head like in the window because he's a teenager who has been doing. God so awful, many crimes. Yeah, God yeah. awful things. And also he's probably like really cocky. So he just poked his head to see like what's going on in there. And Joseph Kennedy happened to be in there. Oh, okay. Just about what was what yeah. had happened to him that wasn't that long after that attack. And he looked out the window at the same time and was able to say, That's the guy. That kid right there. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he was arrested, like on site, fessed up, and he was um, he was the he he was like, yeah, that was me. I've been assaulting small children and brutalizing them at random. So September twenty first, eighteen seventy two, he's arraigned in court at thirteen years old. He can was had confessed. He's found guilty and sentenced to six years at state reform school for boys. Yeah. This led me down a rabbit hole of something we could potentially do uh, on an episode soon, maybe? Because this seemed like... We have a list you could put it on I know. of stuff we never get I to. Just <laughs> I, we have a list. I just thought I'd mention it because I was like, whoa, this seems crazy. Uh, uh, just the penitentiary? The juvenile det- detention system of that time. Oh, okay. Um, in 1874, he's paroled. So we got spent two of the years. Okay. So now he's six. like 14, 15. Yes, he's 15. And he um, he goes back to live with his mom. And in March of that year, so this is not that long even after he's let out, I believe, because it's 1874, March of that year. I think he was like let out with like the new year. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not out long. A young girl named Katie Curran went missing there's a post about it in the paper for five hundred dollars reward for anyone who can find the person who was responsible for her abduction that's Um, a lot of cash for that time yeah in 1850 money so april 22nd 1874 four-year-old horace mullins body was found mutilated in the marshes of dorchester bay uh, police suspected Jesse Pomeroy like right away. Yeah. So why wouldn't they? Right, because he was like a known right person at that point. Um, but because of like lack of evidence, they couldn't pinpoint it on him. Right. Uh, Katie's body was found in the basement of Pomeroy's mom's dress shop. Okay, that's a little more yeah substantial evidence. <laughs> right. Um, and they, it was like not concealed super well. They said it was just like a pile of ash that, that like quick attempt to try and cover it up, but nothing really serious. Like try to burn the body? Uh, no, no, just like like buried under ash. Oh, okay. Um, so like I said, the lack of evidence against 
Horace's murder. They took him to view the remains. Um, and the coroner actually, like, insisted that he not have counsel either, even though that was, like, not... Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> so, just going against the book a little bit. Cause yeah. They, like, wanted him to, like, confess to it. Obviously. Oh, okay, I got you, got they you. didn't yeah. want anyone to be, like... Don't say anything. Don't do it. Right, right, right. Well, it didn't matter because they brought him down to it, and he was like, no, I didn't do that. Yeah. So no effect on on the result of that. Um, so he goes to trial for the murder of Katie Curran. Um, it's the Commonwealth versus Pomeroy, December 9th and 10th of 1874. Um, it's for first-degree murder, murder. There was something in there. About like if the if first degree couldn't hold up, that they would go for like a slightly lesser like a manslaughter kind of not even manslaughter. It was something else. I should have written it down, but I was like, well, they didn't do that, so never mind. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was something to the effect where it didn't have to do with um, premeditation or something like that. Oh, okay. Um, and should they should they find that first degree did not fit it. So that was in place. Again, that didn't matter. He was found guilty on December 10th. Um, the jury recommended mercy on sentencing due to his young age. Um, his attorney filed two exceptions on his part, like over the span of a year or so, both overruled, um, and he was sentenced to hang. Oh, so they the ignored penalty. the mercy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's like he's so young. Yeah, but that he's still been a monster for like three years. Yes. Yeah. So the death warrant could only be signed by Governor William Gaston. Do you guys remember him? I mean, yeah, but for our listeners who might not. <laughs> <laughs> he um he was the one that uh the governor of Massachusetts that re- was there for the um repealing of prohibition. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So he was like the guy. That's a while. I was going to say yeah. that, that. What was you, prohibition? Uh, 1920? No, 1930. This is like 50 20, years. 30, yeah. Oh, maybe. I don't, I hope it's not the same guy. He That'd be like 70 years, no, wouldn't it? No, he definitely had a lot to do with um, prohibition, but maybe it didn't like happen in, in first off, he was. He was many different authorities in Massachusetts. And okay. he was a governor like off and on, I okay. believe. So but I believe you. But I mean Fish doesn't. Maybe it wasn't for <laughs> maybe it wasn't during the time, but he was very pro like hanging this kid? No, get oh. rid of prohibition. Oh, okay. Either way. Oh, so maybe it was a like how we would refer to um George W. Bush as president. Even though he's not currently president, maybe. so maybe it was like yeah. governor such and such, right? Who is not actively governor, but you still address him by that title. Okay, so yeah, he died in eighteen ninety four. He was there for it. He was there for prohibition. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> His ghost haunts. And they're all like, he died twenty years ago. No, there he, yeah. there was something. I no, didn't. he was pro alcohol, but he wasn't prohibition era. Yes, he was pro alcohol. So when there was like. Each, do you guys remember that? Like each state had already kind of went into prohibition on their own, and he was like, "No, but he, anyway, don't worry about it." Okay, uh, we can go back and listen to that episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I oh, don't remember these episodes the when, second they're over. <laughs> when, I, when I saw his name, I was like, "I know him. I think I talked about yeah. him." So it's too bad he didn't get to see his dream come. He to also life. did the Great Boston Fire of eighteen seventy. That's probably that's like, <laughs> he was in something. He was there, yeah. just not like. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think he also was involved in the molasses flood and the Aaron <laughs> Hernandez trial. <laughs> this guy. He gets man. around. Very yeah, prolific. Yeah. 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 Um, he, he, he actually <laughs> just kept avoiding this and would not perform his um Oh, was basically just like not duties. signing it? Yes. He uh, wouldn't do it. He refused to. I'm sorry, guys. I, this, this pen doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, it's out of ink. Um, probably for a lot of reasons in the time. I'm sure it was very controversial. Um, I'm sure no one... I feel one... like anytime you send a 15-year-old to their death. Yes, yeah. I don't think anybody truly wants to do that, even with 
uh, everything the person had done. I don't know. Maybe. This guy definitely didn't want to. Um, this put it in the hands of his council, who had to keep voting on it mm-hmm. in order to get it to, like... <laughs> like to, so, like, supersede him? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. And after three votes... Um, on August 1876, so they kept voting on it, and they kept saying, "Yeah, like yes, we definitely, it's definitely should be the de- the death penalty." And then the governor would be like, "Still no, still so, not signing it." So they had to like go back and start <laughs> yeah. from scratch. Um, 1876, uh, it was commuted to just life in prison rather than the death penalty. Um. So the governor kind of got his wish and just didn't have to deal with it ever again. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if it's his wish. I feel like it, and I'm speaking for someone I don't know, but it just feels like more like one of those like, ooh, I don't want my name on that paper. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Not like, I really want this serial killer to live. No, 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 no. I know. Yeah. But he was, um, he was 16 years old. He was the youngest person in Massachusetts convicted of murder. Um, at that time, up, or, at that time, okay. and then he, I hate that I had to ask that. So, and he is considered the youngest serial killer, although he was only convicted of one, proven guilty of one, and possibility of it another. But he was heading in that direction. Yeah, there was a pattern. He, all the signs were there. Yeah, you, yeah. I mean, it's, the only thing stopping him from having a bigger body count is they caught him early, very mm-hmm. early. Yeah. Which, considering the time, is very surprising. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I, right? Yeah. That shocked me. I was like, whoa. Because you figure he had, like, three victims that lived, and they still couldn't find him. No. I mean. He had, like, f- four, four or five. Uh, well, one of them, I like, mean, fingered he did, him. Yeah. He did stick his head in the police station <laughs> as the guy, as his <laughs> victim was getting questioned, going, oh, uh, that's him? Yeah. Please don't let him out of my sight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, pretty terrible, uh, sadistic little kid that teenager was. Teenagers, man. They're, uh, they're a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they're not. Man. I read it, I didn't write it down because I never liked to, um, I don't, I've never really loved, like, glamorizing people who are terrible yeah but there was very much a lot of interest in him while he was in prison in the that he seemed like one of those hannibal lecter type of people like he was very smart he learned like 10 languages while in prison wow yeah so there was like a level of like genius to him do we know at what age he passed what mm. Like in how his, much? Is in he his seventies? No. <laughs> 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 no, he passed away in his seventies. I think he was seventy-two. So he spent a long time in prison. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And there was some people that went in and like there were, he you know he was part of like the people who go in and talk to people like him. Yeah. Like, so serial killers, quote unquote, and um, yeah, I didn't, but I was like, yeah, he just seems like I don't know. He, it did remind me of, like, Hannibal Lecter. Hannib- yeah. It's like, where he's just yeah. like, I'm so smart and crass, and I got away with it. And I love it. He didn't like, eat people, though. No, that's... I mean, that we know of. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but that is the, the Boston boy fiend, and um, whatever else you want to call him. Now, when I read his nicknames... Yes. And they say the Boston boy fiend. Do do you think he's the boy or the other people? Oh, I was oh. I was somehow expecting worse. Initially, I wouldn't have guessed he was so young. Okay. The boy. But the boy torture, fiend yeah. makes more sense now. The boy torturer. I'm like, is he the torturer? The torture. I mean, I mean, it was kind of both. Yeah. yeah right. Because he's a boy. Yeah. And but he tor- but you, typically, when you're reading about serial killers or learning about serial, they're, like they're that, not. well, that age, they're like torturing animals. Like yeah. he just yeah. skipped that phase. That we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He know. was a God. I don't want to call him a precocious serial killer, but it's kind of yeah. He was he was heading down that path very yeah. very clearly. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, where was he in terms of the molasses flood? 
two years before. Oh, well before. Yeah, right. I don't know. That's why I was trying to like get a That's time frame. That's going to be my new uh, William Shakespeare. When is that in compare? Like, where does that line? <laughs> is this before, <laughs> pre, or post molasses flood? <laughs> Yeah, the molasses flood was in 1919. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like so it was he like, might have still been alive, but yeah, yeah, he wasn't there for it. No. Well, uh, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, and you know what? I picked it him tactfully because um, there he was just it's so long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, tough yeah. to get like really torn up about. Yeah. It was the 1850s. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. So that, I was like, this will be a good one. Um, and specifically when there's like, when there's so much, oh, by the way, most of this is from Wikipedia, but um, there's so much about him and nothing about... His victims? Yes. Yeah. So whenever like that's the case, I'm like, oh, at least it's like for forever ago because when, when something's a little bit more recent and they're spent... And they're, they like, kind of deep dive and... And there's zero about, like, the person that was actually, like, impacted by it. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, not, I think um, the um, the little girl who had that ad taken out, that was, like, the more, <laughs> Katie Curran was, like, the more in-depth thing I could find about anyone that was actually, like, a victim of his. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, the other ones, and not downplaying it, because... It, it clearly was, but like when you're like, oh, he beat up this younger kid, and you're like, okay, was he just like the town a bull- bully? Yeah. yeah, but obviously when when you get to tying up and left in an abandoned, yeah, and uh, they, yeah, they were not like um, left in, I would imagine, like functional condition. Yeah, not like went mm-hmm. home with a black eye. Yeah, yeah, they but, were like like people are finding them. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So anyway, that's a really awful kid that existed in Boston. Oh, Boston. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) Oh, 1850s. Yeah. 70s. 70s. Yeah. Right, yeah, he was born in the 1850s. He was born in the 50s. Yeah. 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 Whew. I know. Way to bring the room down, Anna. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. So glad we recorded this first. (laughs) (laughs) I had to talk about something. (laughs) And I guess this is where we stop talking. And thanks for checking out the show today, listeners. Uh, if you enjoyed the content today, you can go over to patreon.com slash inebriart to support the show. You can join over there for just a few dollars a month and help us provide this fun content that you just checked out. You can also email us at inebriart.com with your questions, complaints, and concerns. Or you can find us on all social medias at inebriart or at inebriart6 on Instagram. And also don't forget to check out our other shows, Bar Talk Podcast, Old Colony Cast, Inebriart, and all the other shows on the Inebriart Network, which you can find at inebriart.com. Thanks again for listening.